Happy Easter evening. How are my peoples? Are we all full? Are we all ready to take a nap? Go to bed early? <laughs> so, I got a request to see and look into Stonehenge. The prehistoric monument in Whitshire, England, believed to be built around 3000 BC. There's a bunch of burial grounds around there. Is it a sundial? Is it a ceremony for passage to life, to death? And do these rocks have healing powers through their vibrations and whatnot? It's a mystical thing. And those blocks are really huge. So in 3000 BC, how could people move these rocks and place them that heavy? I guess there was an experiment done, and I think it said like 18 miles. Some people tried to do a remedial thing of how they could move it with, and it did work. It was a lot of work, but they were able to. However they did it. I didn't read much into it, but. So, this is upside down. Did I do something? Okay. This is my Illuminati deck I'm going to use. This is what I like to use because the Illuminati is kind of mysterious. So mysterious things. This is the deck I like to start with. Um, this is what I use for aliens and other strange things. Clarify whatever deck I feel is good. So let's see what we can get about Stonehenge. Stonehenge. <sighs> I just heard alien. I just heard it was placed there by not of this world. We'll see. Stonehenge. What can we get about what Stonehenge is there for? I'm hearing it's like a beacon. <clears throat> a strategically placed format of like a beacon to the heavens and does have astrological format for sun and moon and coordinational And it feels like it was placed there for its location, kind of like the parallel and longitude, latitude. Something to do with the rotation of the earth and where it's at for some reason. And it feels like the people back then found it and felt and seen you know like the shadows and when the light was certain how it would project different things and felt the vibrational force there so they used it as a um 
as a place of the transference to move on in life. And they would do like ceremonies for a peaceful passing to the other side. And that feels like why there was burial grounds around there. And it does feel like certain rocks or whatever there do have some spiritual powers per se that they do vibrate and are odd. So, let's continue. <laughs> Stonehenge. What can the cards tell us about Stonehenge? Kind of heard not much. <laughs> we'll see. What can the cards tell us about Stonehenge? What can the cards tell us about Stonehenge? Cut, no. Oh, it don't fall down. I'm losing my tablet. Hang on. Oh, really? I'm going to pause. My tablet's falling. Okay, I think it's secure. Hmm. On the bottom, <clears throat> on the bottom, it's the Nine of Swords. Mind. That's worry and disaster and failure. Kind of a weird one on the bottom. Let's see. In the middle, we have the Seven of Swords. Some more mind and conflict. That feels like it's generally a the trickster card. But it's Feels like they wanted to work on the transference from life to death. They kind of felt like it would <clears throat> what they wanted to do when they were worried that death with the burden of the five of swords and you have your two of swords hanging. That's your partnership kind of thing. Your crossroads. So you have your burdens of what happens after life. But they thought this um, Stonehenge would give you that crossing over to that other side. They, they were worried about the other side. So on top we have the Eight of Wands, which is your quick journey. And uh, confidence and the moving on in the middle of strength, they felt this place would give confidence to those who were leaving the physical plane. And the seven of coins. Um, it's the harvest card. So, if they you would do these rituals, you would gain your harvest into the next phase of your soul. So, next to the working on things with the Seven of Swords is the Tower. So that is the new new journey for moving on from death. 
or life to death. Queen of Swords. It's another conflict card. With the swords. But they're they're trying to make an ally. Trying to make that connection what they felt was there in Stonehenge. High Priestess, the people felt like it was magical. There was something there that would give them prosperity. Eight of Coins is professional. Is a professional and the wheel of fortune your fate. So there's there was an overseer, you know, like a pope or something that would perform rituals to make your fate more purposeful once you move on. Emperor, it feels like governmental too. And uh, the Princess of Cups, that's the Page of Cups. Bringing the emotional feelings of here on Earth the positive skills and helpful feelings of that it's okay. The hermit would be the, the transition. To the next plane. And then the prince of swords, which is the knight of swords. That feels like multiple people. With this emperor person. I didn't get the hierophant, which would be like a pope or something, but... But this feels like there's a, you know, like someone took charge, created a ritual with many people assisting, kind of like chanting or whatnot. And once these people would pass away, um, I, I feel like some were even cremated and then buried you know, in a cemetery or near there. So it became a ritualistic place. So you said, it feels like it began with, with these swords at first, with the overall. Because this place was so mysterious and had the vibrations that's what it became. But I want to delve into I didn't get where it actually came from and how it was placed and whatnot. So this is what I'm getting for what what was used, what it was used for when it was found and done. How was Stonehenge put there? 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 It feels like it wasn't a populated area at that time. So, like in the middle of the night, it was placed. 
kind of thing. And then it was stumbled upon later. <clears throat> but it feels like it was put there for a, like a, a beacon or a transmissional source. Or like a, <laughs> a CB or a, what do you call it? <laughs> to the, to the, <clears throat> to, um, kind of like hone in on earth kind of thing. Why, who put Stonehenge there? And how was it done? Who put Stonehenge there? And how was it done? Who put Stonehenge there? And how was it done? Who put Stonehenge there? And how was it done? Okay. Crossroads, Two of Swords, overall. So that would make me feel like it is a transference from one place to the other. In the crossroads here, we have the moon. So it kind of representing me, space. And using it, it feels like the people that do these rituals felt like it was a beacon to heaven because of its energy it was possessing. Um, the lovers. The lovers. Okay, the lovers card here on top. It feels like an almighty source from above connecting the people on earth. Queen of Wands. It was meant as a loving source. Ace of Swords. New beginning. Hmm. What is this new beginning? That one confuses me. It feels like a spiritual connection. The new beginning of the spiritual connection from here to there. The world. It was meant to be shown to the world. Well, it obviously became, it became a, an attraction, so it became a worldwide source of interest. Seven of Wands. Confusion card. Oh, people can get confused because of the vibrations there. Here's your emperor. Again, it feels like a higher source from above. When I did the reading on um, how our solar system was created, I was getting there's a higher source than God. Something more powerful than God. Beyond. And that's what it feels like. 
Ten of Cups, a creation of the happy connection. Here's the Seven of Swords again. The conflicts of that transference, the tower. It sure feels like it was a source of hope. There's the Nine of Swords again. I had that in the last reading. It sure feels like it was meant to be a source to transfer from life to death and beyond. Four of Wands, your retreat. Queen of Swords, I got that in the last throw too. Queen of Swords feels like it can be an easing of the mind because the Queen is generally a passionate person, a passionate source. King of Wands is the family man. It's the energy, action, knowledgeable, a higher intelligence. Yeah, that would make sense. Alien type form, a higher intelligence. Yeah, that's the king of wands, your higher intelligence. Forest surge, there's your stepping back. It feels religious. It, this card always feels religious to me because the background is a church. You see the window panes. <laughs> kind of like Mother Mary's looking over you. <clears throat> it's your retreat. So people are laid, laid their rest there. Here's the fool with the new journey. Ten of coins, that feels like the, um, the blessings you receive after your journey. The magician is the creator of all things. The mysterious one. You, the person or the energy that can create that action, create that mind, create the love and blessings. Six of Cups, you go through your memories of your past and your hopes, or your, uh, you reach your, you know, when you, when you pass on, you will have all those memories you carry with from your family and what you've done and your reevaluation. So the Six of Cups is your emotional memory card. And you go into new growth. The Five of Pentacles feels like the loss of your body. And there we have death, your new beginning. So to me, it feels like it came from a higher source that created it as a beacon for one, but also a source for moving on to your next life. So like, like if people visit it, may have like a spiritual reaction to it almost. Those of higher sensitivity. Because it almost does feel like holy ground to me. Uh, 24 minutes. Um, let's see, how was it moved? 
How was it moved there? Let's see, did... How was it moved there? And are those pieces... Are those stones of the earth? I guess I never looked at that online. If they, you know, carbon dated the actual Stonehenge stones that are placed there. Hmm. How were the Stonehenge pieces placed? How were they placed? How were they placed? And did that come from... Did the stones come from Earth? Were they found? Really strange. I might have to split this up. How were they placed? How were the Stonehenge stones placed? I'm getting they were not they were not placed by man. How were they placed? How were the Stonehenge stones placed? Because they had to be strategically placed on how they wanted them. Kind of like a sundial or something, or to capture what they wanted to capture. How were they placed? How was placed? It almost feels like levitation or just using like six extraterrestrials just using their mind and their energy to move them. How is Stonehenge placed? How is Stonehenge placed? Tower, the first play, first card. So, how would the tower represent how they were placed? I'm not sure. I'm not getting that. Jesus, nine of swords again. The world. Okay, the pieces came from around the world. There we go. The different symbolic places around the earth. At different points were found each shape and how they were going to do it correlated to what they wanted to achieve. So the pieces were found around the world. And many, the tower, it feels like many were created from like not like earthquakes or pieces that broke off that just perfectly fit kind of thing. Um, Princess of a uh, Page of Wands. Stonehenge is created to be a messenger, a message type uh, beacon, like I said before. 
four of pentacles. Hmm. Four of pentacles. This card look like to me. Um. It was meant to be in England. Is that that feels like the positioning of it. Because of where the sun would hit it at that direct longitude and latitude. Nine of coins. Is what they wanted to achieve. Four of Cups. A place of rest. A page of Swords. Page of Swords is the preparing. Place of rest preparing for your next generation. Your next journey. Five of swords, your change, your mind change, as you're going from life to death. So it's not really telling me how, but it feels like it came from different parts of the world and move secretly, because there was less, less people back there, but it feels like it came from around the world strategically for that reason. Like, oh, so like with uh, earthquakes or a volcano, it feels like there was more energy in these stones that broke off. Eight of Wands again, I got. And that would be movement through air. Hmm. Star of Hope. These people came from the stars. And the temperance angel. So it feels like these otherworldly beings that moved us had a connection and know about the passing of life and created this as a partnership for one is a beacon for them, kind of, and an energy-charged place is like a signal for them. All right. This was kind of long. I guess it went long, a little longer than I hope, but very mysterious. I don't get it all that it could have been moved 3,000 before Christ. Those big and set on top perfectly to go beyond time. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I got about Stonehenge. So <laughs> love and blessings. Be good. Uh, be safe. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. And be good. Love your family. Uh, take this time to reflect and connect. That's it for now.